thing from the standard therapy being adriamycin, cyclophosphamide, followed by taxol. We've been, we've been slowly shifting this to uh, um, essentially carboplatin plus uh, taxotere, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, as I said again, uh, we have been looking at it recently at our results and it's not it's okay. It's not the response to the complete responses that we have are not are, are somewhat irregular. So sometimes it's thirty percent, sometimes it's forty, but we haven't seen a clear increase with time, you know, from the from the year two thousand to the year two thousand sixteen. We haven't seen any a gradual increase of the complete responses. So yeah. we're not sure at this point of which is the best, right? Yeah. Uh, some some patients very rarely very rarely come after having had surgery. And these patients, we, you, the post-operative surgery we use at this point is usually, again, either uh, some form of chemotherapy. But okay. we, we're, not, we're not sure if there's a clear standard now, nowadays. Yeah, that's great. And I would like to ask you, I know that in Europe is not approved yet, but I saw that yesterday in the US, uh, Keytruda, Pembrolizumab, received approval for early stage high risk patients with triple negative breast cancer. Yeah. I would like to know. We will see. We will see. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I was saying that we will see what, what happens here. The agencies are not very keen on, uh, you know, uh, introducing this uh, pd one um, drugs, anti pd one drugs in, uh, in early stage breast cancer. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then for the metastatic setting for triple negative, um, what is usually the treatment options that you have available in Spain to use? Well, chemotherapy, well, none, none of them is particularly good, right? Yeah. Uh, we do have approved um, Olaparib for okay. patients that have BRCA mutation, but so we routinely, routinely perform ERCA testing in in the patients with uh, um, in patients with the um, uh, triple negative breast cancer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, if I'm not wrong, uh, niraparib, which is another option in for ovarian cancer, it's not approved in 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 Spain uh, for uh, for um, for breast cancer, so uh, uh, we, we're limited to using olaparib in the cases that are, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm checking and, and, and we would not have these approved. Okay. So we're, we're limited to, to olaparib in, the, in, in patients, in cases that are BRCA mutation positive. Yeah. So uh, for the others, for the others, we use chemotherapy, you know, as we can. So. There's no really standard of therapy, it's particularly because the majority of patients already have um, active therapy in some form. So yeah. it really depends a lot on what, what we have used first. We have now a clinical trial. We're testing for some mutations in the um, in the uh, FGF receptor gene, and we're you trying to use some FGF, FGA. Sorry, the, some fibroblast growth factor uh, inhibitor in these patients. Or, or, I don't know. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's very confusing. And also, triple negative is a definition of breast cancer, which includes at least uh, six or seven types of different types of breast cancer. Some of them are very sensitive to chemotherapy. Some are very refractory. So, okay. Um, I think that these patients, what they really need is a. Um, of being more comprehensive in the molecular characterization. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And if I if I remember correctly, um, I think the PDL one inhibitor atezolizumab in combination with a uh, napaclitaxel it was approved in Europe for first line metastatic setting. Is it yeah. something that is available for you to use in Spain, or you don't usually use it? Um, 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 in Spain, uh, at this point, this drug is not approved, actually. Okay. None of the period. Right? Oh, my God. 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 Oh
Bless you. Okay. Very good evening. The, uh, it's very hot today. And, uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, um, uh, saying the, what, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the none of the PDL1 inhibitors is approved at this point okay. for um, breast cancer, right? So, uh, I don't know. We have used it sometimes, right? Uh, but we have never have seen a very remarkable responses, I have to say, as opposed to lung cancer, for example, or even hepatocellular cancer, for example, which is some of the indications of the one. Yeah. We have seen responses in, in, in brain liver cancer, but I have never seen one in, in breast. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, and then another agent I, wa I wanted to ask you about, I know that it's not approved in Europe at the moment, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's approved in the U.S. So is a TROP2 targeting agent. The name is Trodelvi, the brand name. Uh, Sacituzumab Govichikan, I think is the yeah. name. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, I, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, I, know, I know it exists. I know the results don't seem too bad. Um, I'm not familiar at all with TROP. So, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, for me, it's a new, a new target uh, But I've never seen any. I never, I never had it. I never used it. And, yeah. uh, and the results I've seen um, are, you know, correct. Not very, the result. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying what I've read, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is, is, you know, interesting but not very exciting. Okay, that that makes sense. And do you expect? any changes in the treatment for triple negative breast cancer patients in the next 10 years, maybe? Or do you think there, there Well, I think the changes in therapy will need to have to arrive from, um, as I said earlier, from the molecular characterization of the triple negative breast cancer. So I think breast cancers need to be categorized in at least two or three subtypes, mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise, uh, at this point, it's very complicated. I think, I think that the uh, we do have one type, which is the BRCA-positive cases, right? Yeah. Uh, but then, <coughs> you know, some, some, some friends of mine in the U.S. have dedicated quite some time in, some time in um, uh, to, to study For example, uh, the cases that are triple negative and also they are positive for the androgen receptor. Mm -hmm. They've used, they've studied the use of androgen uh, inhibitors of some sort. And uh, the results are not particularly good. So, but, but we all know these cases are very resistant to chemotherapy. So it depends on whether in a particular year you have like two patients that are um, Antigen receptor related triple negative breast cancer, and then your whole statistic, you know, may change. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what, what happens in our case. Yeah. So I think the molecular characterization of triple negative breast cancer is a, something that we will definitely, definitely need to do. We'll need to do in the, in the, you know, in the next few years. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And uh, I think now what I would like, I what I would like to ask you is. Uh, in terms of the emerging therapies that we have um, in the pipeline at the moment, uh, from the late phase developments, uh, which therapies or drug classes do you find most promising, in your opinion? I don't know. The, uh, it's not uh, for triple negative breast cancer or in general? Oh, in general. Uh, triple negative. Yeah, it can be oh, in general? For, for any subtypes, uh, yeah. Of the ones with... with uh, So the ones we talked about, we don't. That's that's okay, right? So yeah. You you you're asking me of the more new drugs, right? The drugs that are newer. Yeah. Than those, yeah. Um, I don't know. The results with, uh, for example, I know that Roche had you know high hopes with hepatocerte, mm -hmm. uh, but the results have, uh, so far are not you know very exciting. I would say. Um, there were like two or three. Companies, including AstraZeneca, Roche, and somebody else that I can't remember, uh, had, for example, um, uh, uh, estrogen receptor inhibitors of, of, of different mechanisms of action than yes. the ones that we use now. But none of these seem to be...